Scott Shannon back with Jim Phillips. We're ready to kick it off. Wofford, uh, of course, had the option at the beginning of the game. Clemson has the option to start the second half, and the Tigers elect to receive. Uh, we'll take a look at these stats as soon as time permits, too. Once again, the voice of the Tigers, Jim Phillips. Harrison's kick to begin the second half. Back is Kevin Mack. He's got it at the 2. Up over the 5 to the 10 to the 15. Cuts out to the 20. Fights his way to the 25 and down at the 27-yard line. So Kevin Mack with a 25-yard return. The second half is underway here at the Valley. The Tigers leading at 17-3. White was there for the Wofford Terriers. First half stats, very interesting. Wofford, 12 first downs. Clemson, 9. Wofford, 101 yards rushing. Clemson, 100. Passing yardage. Clemson with a slight advantage there, 134 to 100. But you got to remember, 80 of those came on one play. McCall, Austin in the I formation. Gilliard is to the left side. Here's Homer Jordan. Back to throw as Barry Tuttle races down the right side. Jordan on the run, 30, 35. Jordan out to the 40 and across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Homer Jordan rolling to his right, looking to throw, decided to tuck it in and go. He did. Jerry Gilliard with a big block over there on the corner. And the Tigers have a first down. They've marked it at their own 46-yard line. Perry Tuttle in the first half caught three passes, 125 yards, and one touchdown, of course. All right, Stock still is in. He's wide left. Magwood splits off right end. Again, McCall lines up with Austin. Austin gets the call. No gain. He is hip hard as he crosses the 45 to the 46. Kirk Breland is there. Defensive left tackle for the Wofford Terriers. Just into the second half of play. Clemson on top in this game by a score of 17-3. Tigers got off to a sluggish start this afternoon. Wofford led it 3-0. Tigers came back to tie it. Then a long bomb to Perry Tuttle. Then Jordan raced 14 yards to a score, and that's the scoring as it's been. Jordan this time, quick down and out for Tuttle. Across the 50, into about the 46-yard line of Wofford, where he is knocked out of bounds by Tim Renfro. See where they spot the football now. It will be at the 45-yard line where they place it down. So the Tigers now will have third and one from the 45-yard line of the Wofford Terriers. Well, it would appear they're going to go back to the two tight end offense. Tuttle and Galliard both come out. Yep. Jim Worst is in there along with Bubba Diggs and a wing to the right side this time. Here is the ride off to uh, the tailback. That's Austin who dives straight ahead. I think he got the first down. He crossed the 44, and I believe he has enough for the first down. It is first down, Tigers, as up defensively was Barry Mason, a defensive end, and Piper Nicholson. So first and 10 Tigers at the 44-yard line of the Wofford Terriers. Tuttle goes wide to the right side. Magwood splits off left end. It will be Gilliard who is a slot to the right. Again, McCall along with Austin in the eye as Homer Jordan takes out. Jordan now quick throw. That is Magwood. He can't hang on at the 34-yard line. The ball was thrown a little low in defense of Frank Magwood, and he had problems getting his hands on it. Renfro was there covering it was right at his knees, and it sort of handcuffed him. He had his hands on it, but couldn't quite bring it back up into his belly. Uh, Danny just pats him on the head and says, it's okay, it was tough. It was a tough catch. 13-25 to go in the third period of play. 17-3, Clemson on top. Out they come now. It's second down, Tigers. Jordan this time keeping. He's only going to get one, and he is hammered down. Homer Jordan that time looked as if he may have missed a handoff to one of the backs there, and he pulled it back in and stepped up in there, but Breland met him and hauled him down hard at the 42-yard line. So now it is going to be third down and about eight for the Tigers at the 42 of the Wofford Terriers. Magwood goes wide to the right side. Tuttle comes left. Gilliard is a slot left. McCall and Austin in the eye. Here's Gilliard in motion from left to right. Jordan takes out, back to throw. He has time. He's going to run with it now. Homer at the 40, 35. He's got a first down as he fights his way to the 32-yard line. Homer Jordan rolling to his right again, looking to pass. And again, with the two wide receivers to the left side, that defense did not react, Scott, as he rolled out against it. And there was an opening there for him, and he took advantage of it. Bubba Diggs and Stock still getting back in. Gilliard and Tuttle coming out. Nope, Tuttle's going to, or uh, Gilliard's going to remain in. It's going to be Tuttle and Magwood coming out. Homer had 149 yards total offense in the first half. So 134 of those through the air. Stock still left, Gilliard right. Straight up the middle goes Jeff McCall. He crosses the 30 to the 29-yard line. It's there that Kirk Breland comes up to make the tackle on him. 
So the pickup is three yards. It'll be second down and seven now. Magwood's going to get back in. This time, Gilliard checks out for the Tigers. Just into the third quarter, 12 minutes and five seconds remaining in quarter number three with Clemson on top 17-3 to three over Wofford. The Tigers received the kickoff here in the third quarter, and they've begun moving with it. Here is Austin. Finds a hole over the right side. He's at 25-20 down the sidelines and knocked out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Allen Tuthill caught up with Cliff Austin and bounced him out of bounds at about the 18-yard line. Had he not gone out of bounds there, he may have still been running. What is the uh, Rudyard Kipling uh, poem, If? <laughs> if he'd had two more yards in that sidelines, he was tight roping as best he could, but he had daylight. All right, stock still wide to the left side. Gil Yard will split off right in. Homer Jordan has them first down at the 18, gives them a call, hams are straight ahead, and crosses the 15 to the 14-yard line. At that point, he is met and knocked down by Barry Mason, defensive end of the Wofford Terriers. So the Tigers now break from the huddle as Magwood heads to the right side. Frank Magwood right, Jeff Stock still to the left, Homer Jordan the quarterback. They work from an eye, pitch back to Cliff Austin. Austin behind a block trying to get outside. Can't get much, however, as he's bounced out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. Austin was doing a good job of following the blocker on the play, but uh, Stockstow couldn't take care of everyone over there, and as a result, Austin bumped out of bounds at the 13. They just kept stringing him out, stringing him out till uh, they finally bumped him out of bounds. Ronnie Ray was the man who made the defensive play. It's third down and five, Clemson. Magwood goes to the right. Tuttle comes left. Gilliard to slot left. Homer Jordan at quarterback. Sends Gilliard in motion from left to right. Homer takes out. Gives off to McCall, and Jeff fights his way straight ahead to about the 11-yard line, and that'll be it. And it's going to be interesting to see if... Uh... Well, what do you think? Well, right now, it looks as though they may go with an offensive play here because yep. you know, they're going to ask for timeout, I believe. As I look down to the sidelines, I see the timeout being flashed, and that is exactly what we've got. So there is 10.51 remaining in the third quarter, and with timeout on the field, the score stands Clemson 17, Wofford 3. conservatism shown that time on a third down play Scott uh, mm -hmm. you may have been listening on the pregame show when Danny Ford indicated they've had problems with goal line offense over the last couple of years and they thought they might become more varied but they went back to the old tackle dive that time well with a 14 point lead here's a chance to work on it all right Gilliard's in motion from left to right Homer Jordan up under quarterback takes out rolling to his right on fourth down looking to throw firing and it is caught for a touchdown. <laughs> Frank Magwood did a beautiful job of hanging on with the toes on the sideline to grab it just inside the flag. Homer Jordan hits on his second touchdown pass play of the afternoon and that makes it a 23 to three football game. Beautiful job by Magwood. Pauling is on now to attempt the point after. He's two for two thus far on the day. I still don't believe he caught it, Jim. <laughs> An incredible catch falling out of the end zone. There's the kick by Pauling in the air. The kick is good. There is time out on the field. The score, Tigers 24, Wofford 3.
Okay, we're back. 13 yards, 70, uh, or 13 plays, 73 yards. Uh, four touchdowns on the touchdown drive. The culmination, uh, Homer Jordan to Frank Magwood, an 11-yard touchdown pass. Hauling at it a point after. It's 24-3 now with the Tigers on top. Uh, that was not an extremely conservative call on fourth and short in the 11, Jim. No, it wasn't. They did open it up somewhat, and a great catch by Magwood falling out of the side of the end zone. It was just a question of whether his feet were in bounds, and obviously they were. Igwe Buikwe's kick, a flat one down the left side. It is going to be into the end zone and out of the end zone, so it'll come out to the 20-yard line, and that's where Wofford will take over the football first and 10. So the Tigers now have built up a lead of 24 to 3 here in the third quarter with 10.46 remaining. Ball spotted at the 20. Wofford will now get their hands on it offensively for the first time in the second half of play. Out they come. Taylor is going wide to the left side. Wing to the right is Lang. They have Wilson and Gaines in behind. This time the ball is loose out there, but it's recovered by Wofford right around the 21-yard line. They got a break there. The ball slipped out of Lang's arm, just uh, almost through his arm. And luckily for Wofford, someone was there to pounce on it. But It was Jimmy Fowler, the right guard, who recovered the football. They've marked it just across the 20, but not far enough to call it a yard, so it's second down and 10. Here comes David Moore, split out to the right side. Lang will be a wing to the left as Bradshaw brings him in motion from left to right. Second and 10, Bradshaw takes out. This time it's back to Gaines. Gaines sweeping wide left out over the 25, moves out to the 28-yard line before Jeff Davis can haul him down. Gaines that time got to the corner and then exhibited his speed as he was able to get up to about the 28. And it now will be third down, two yards to go for the Wofford Terriers. Opening game of the season here at the Valley, a crowd of 60,000 on hand this afternoon to see the Tigers going against Wofford. As Bradshaw brings them out, straight wishbone, flags down. I don't know whether Wofford jumped or whether Clemson was guilty of encroachment. The handoff was to Wilson. All sorts of movement on that side of the line. Illegal procedure, Wofford is the preliminary call. So that'll cost them five, and it will set it back now to the 23-yard line. Next week, the Tigers are in the Superdome in New Orleans. They go against the green wave of Tulane. And our airtime around the Clemson Network next Saturday night will be 8 o'clock Eastern uh, Daylight Time. Looking forward to that. Yeah, going to be a nice trip. Isn't it? Never, never been to New Orleans. I never have either. We'll have to paint the town orange, Scott. <laughs> okay, we'll do Straight that. Straight wishbone, third down, seven yards to go. Bradshaw keeps, gets to the corner. He's out across the 25, but he's knocked out of bounds before he can get to the 30-yard line by Anthony Rose, who came up from his corner position. He is just shy of the 30-yard line, about six inches shy, and it's fourth down now for Wofford. I don't know whether Buddy Sasser would elect to gamble on this or not. Well, he's down by 21. Uh, There's no punter in there yet, I can nope. tell you that. Nope. They got eight seconds to get uh, this they're play going off, to go. Yeah, that clock is ticking down. Four, three, two, the 25-second clock. They get the play off, and they get the first down. It is Lang, and he has run out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Just as the 25-second clock was ticking off, Lang took the direct handoff and scampers for a first down at the 41-yard line. Well, that's a big gamble there. But up to now, it paid off for the Wofford Terriers. Another first down for Wofford. Lang in the first half incidentally had uh, 50 yards uh, rushing, another 30 passing. Here's the wishbone again. Bradshaw this time, giving it off once more to Gaines, who tries left tackle, gets good yardage as he moves out across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Jeff Bryant was there defensively, along with Jeff Davis for the Tigers. They've spotted it at the 47-yard line, where it'll be second down, five yards to go now for Wofford. And the clock is moving with 8.45 left to go in the third period of play. Taylor comes out wide to the right side. Straight wishbone offense. This time, Bradshaw keeping, now pitching back with the football. It's Lang, turns his way up the left side and gets out near the midfield stripe and has bounced out of bounds again, this time by Jeff Bryant. 
Well, it's the 1981 football season. It is here. And 60,000 strong have come out to celebrate that fact here at the Valley this afternoon. This is the earliest opening date Clemson has ever played. Uh, the two previous early dates were September 8th. Clemson has never played football before Labor Day, but this year they will. Here's the wing bone, and the give is off to Lang, and nowhere to go as they tried that counter, and the Tiger defense smelling it all the way. William Perry and Danny Triplett were there, and they stood him in his track, so now it'll be fourth down, and Wofford will punt the football. Marshall averaged on five punts, 43 yards in the first half. And that includes that 59-yarder he had. Billy Davis backed up to the 10, awaiting the kick from Chris Marshall. Oh, they're going to get a roughing the kicker here. Yes, sir. Going to get a roughing the kicker here. Diving through there was Vandell Arrington. And you know, Jim, that was a 51-yard punt. Now he booted it well, but Arrington with what will go down on the films as a glowing error. <laughs> you got to give up a few yards in front when you're coming from the outside as he was, and he went straight at the kicker and, and got Marshall across the leg. So that will give the possession of the football right back to the Terriers and give them excellent field position now inside the 40-yard line of the Tigers. It was not a vicious hit, uh, but it did the job, and Wofford gets the first down at the 39. Oh, here come the Terriers once again now. Taylor goes wide to the left side. They'll work with Menzer, a wing to the right. Menzer comes in motion far wide right now. Bradshaw's back to throw. He's being chased out of there, and down he goes. Good defensive play that time by William Devane, the middle guard, as he came up through and knocked Bradshaw down at the 43-yard line. Well, Devane came in for Perry, who's getting a breather. Perry has played an awful lot. He is that uh, highly touted freshman. All 285 pounds of him, but Devane has played quite a game today also. 7.24 left to go. Third period, Clemson on top, 24-3, but Wofford driving. Daddy Graves is wide to the right side. In motion now is Menser. Here's Bradshaw on a give this time to Anthony Gaines. Cracks over right tackle. He's inside the 40 to the 38-yard line before he is pulled down. So they get back some of that lost yardage from the previous play. It'll bring about third down and about eight now. Defensively, Mark Richardson and Jeff Davis put the stop on him that time. Here comes Wofford out now. Wide to the left side. They send David Moore. Wing to the right side, that's Menzer. Here's Bradshaw, back to throw on third down. Has plenty of time going over the middle. It is intercepted. Picking it off is Terry Kennard. Kennard carries out over the 35 to about the 37-yard line. David Moore made the tackle. Terry Kennard comes up with the first Tiger interception on the 1981 football season. And the Tigers take over first and 10 at their own 37-yard line. Jeff Bryant was coming hard that time, and right after Bradshaw released, he met Jeff Bryant. I tell you, Bradshaw threw the ball in a whole bunch of orange shirts. That pass was well, well covered. Tuttle to the left, Gilliard goes right. Homer Jordan sets them down. He has in the backfield Kevin Mack and McSwain. Here's a quick throw for Tuttle. Can't hang on out at the 50. Perry had to go on a dive for the football and couldn't quite come up with it. Tony Painter was there covering. He looks like he's shaken up, Jim. A little bit, but I don't think seriously as he heads back to the huddle. Okay. A few more stations. The Kerry Clemson football. WOLS in Florence. WRIX in Honeypath. WVAP in Langley, South Carolina. And WKMG Newberry. Hope you folks along the line are enjoying this afternoon's opener. Stock still is wide left. Gilliard is a slot left. Magwood splits off right end. Homer Jordan takes out. This time pitch back. This is McSwain with some running room. Gets out to the 43, but a good diving tackle that time by Curtis Patterson, the free safety. Just about the time Chuck McSwain looked as though he might break something, Patterson grabbed him by the ankle to spin him down. The play was there on the corner just a... Superb individual effort by Patterson. Kept that one going a long, long way. Six minutes to go, third period. Kendall Alley is in now. He goes wide to the right side. Hill yards a slot right. Homer Jordan, a quarterback. 
This time, handing it off to the first man through, that was Kevin Mack, and he dives across the 45 to the 46. He'll be shy of a first down as Ronnie Ray was there defensively for the Wofford Terriers, and now Clemson faced with a fourth down and one situation. And I believe we're going to see Dale Hatcher. Okay. The much-heralded freshman putter now. Heard a lot of good things about him. Backed up deep, Tim Renfro. Hatcher hits it very high. Renfro calling for a fair catch, lets it hit oh. at the 10, and it bounces out of bounds at the 9-yard line. So Hatcher aims it to the corner and gets off a of beauty, backing the Terriers up to their 9, a punt of 45 yards. Well, would you say a couple of freshman kickers have made their marks today? Yes. <laughs> okay. You mean Igwe Buike and Hatcher? <laughs> way big way. I think by the end of the season I'll have that name down pat. I don't know as I ever will. <laughs> I'll call him Donald. Uh, he broke in with a bang, a 52-yard field goal if you joined us a little late, and uh, it was it did not just barely make it. It made it big, didn't yes. it? Yes. Bradshaw brings them out. They'll work from a straight wishbone now. He rides it off. No, he's keeping. Turns it up over the right side, but a good defensive job by the Tigers that time. They were smelling a keeper by Bradshaw. The first to get to him was Hollis Hall, and he had a lot of help out there. William Perry. Danny Triplett was also there. So no gain on the play. Well, give him a half a yard. We'll call it second down and nine. I'm amazed with Perry's mobility. He was out on the corner making that play from nose guard. Taylor goes wide to the left side now. They'll line up with Lang, a wing on the right. Bradshaw. This time giving to Lang again on that counter reverse. But I'll tell you one thing. The Tigers must have had some blackboard work on that play during halftime because he gets a couple, and that is it, as Bryant and Jim Scott are there defensively. Mark it at the 11-yard line. It is third down, seven yards to go now for the Wofford Terriers. And the Clemson defense here in the second half uh, beginning to shut down the Terriers a little bit. Wofford uh, pretty much won the first half statistics, not on the scoreboard, but statistically they uh, they had the edge. Danny Graves out to the right side. This time again they give to Lang on that reverse, and again he is smothered, this time back inside the five-yard line. He was looking to throw but he had no opportunity because Jeff Bryant, Jeff Davis, and Ray Brown were all over him, and they smash him down back at the four-and-a-half-yard line where it is fourth and long now for the Terriers, and Marshall will back all the way up to the restraining line in the end zone to punt as Billy Davis drops back to receive for the Tigers. Marshall gets the kickoff. It's a line drive. Davis grabs it at the 49 or 44 to the 40 and in he goes to about the 36 yard line where down he goes and up across for Wofford to make the stop on him was Ricky Loss. So the Tigers with excellent field position now as they have the football they have spotted it at the 37 yard line of the Wofford Terriers. Big hand for the defense. Uh, they played extremely well in fact on the third down play Lang wanted to pass but physically could never get turned around and squared up to throw it. Kevin Mack, Cliff Austin in the eye formation. Gilliard goes right, stock still is left. Pitch back, this is Austin. Across the 35 to the 30, down to the 27-yard line. And finally pulled down around the 27-yard line is Cliff Austin. Make it about the 28-yard line. Ronnie Ray and John Gant were there from the linebacker positions for the Wofford Terriers. So the Tigers come up short of a first down by about a yard and a half. Jim, I believe we're beginning to see some of that Clemson depth beginning to tell on uh, Wofford. Here's Stockstill wide to the left. Magwood splits off right end. This time it is off to Austin again. He has the first down as he hurdles across the 25 into the 22-yard line. And at that point is hauled down as diving across was Ronnie Ray to make the defensive play. Two minutes, 43 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Tigers on top, 24-3. Stock still again, splits out to the left side. Gilliard goes wide right, eye formation, in behind Homer Jordan. Rides it off to Kevin Mack, the first man through, and he dives over the 20 to about the 19-yard line, and that'll be it, as Barry Langrier, the defensive right end, is up for Wofford to make the play. A lot of very interesting opening games here today, September 5th. Uh, 
South Carolina has a tough opener against Wake Forest. Uh, Tennessee and Georgia, another tough opener. Alabama has to go to LSU to play tonight. And that's an extremely tough pay place to play. Worst and Diggs, double tight end. Stock still is wide to the left. This time Kevin Mack fumbles, and I believe Wofford recovers. Looks as though Wofford may have the football here. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe not. Homer Jordan getting up and off Homer the bottom. Homer Jordan yeah. got it, yeah. I'll tell you, I saw nothing but white around that thing. I don't know where Homer came from. He may have been a gopher digging a little trench <laughs> under the ground to get to it or something. That ball pops straight up in the air. Well, it's marked at the 14-yard line. And at that point, it'll be third down for the Tigers. Out they come. Homer Jordan has them down. Third and about two and a half. Pitch back. This is Austin. Turns the corner. First down and more as he's across the 10 and out of bounds near the eight-yard line. So a big first down there after a loose ball almost got away into the hands of Wofford. The Tigers maintain possession. They'll have it at the nine where it's first and goal. Robert Renfro forcing Austin out of bounds. Well, Perry Tuttle back into the game and uh, Scaliard out, I believe. No, stock still out. Tuttle comes wide to the left side. Magwood splits off right end. Kevin Mack along with Cliff Austin. Austin gets the pitch back, turns the corner. Beautiful job of running as he squirms out of the arms of one tackler and gets inside the five to about the four-yard line. Finally bringing down was Robert Renfro. Minute 19 to go in the third period of play. 24-3, Clemson on top of Wofford and threatening again. Ball is nudged right up against the three-yard line. Second down and goal for the Tigers as they come out once again. Brendan Kreit will be a wing to the left side. They work from an eye formation. Homer Jordan takes out, keeps, turns, touchdown! Homer Jordan with his second touchdown of the afternoon stepped in with nobody near him that time. A three-yard scamper for six, and the Tigers move on top 30-3 to three over Wofford. And on once again will be Bob Pauling to attempt the point after. Homer has had a great opening game. We're ready to hold, awaiting the snap. Here's the spot. Pauling's kick is up. His kick is good. Time out on the field. The score here at the Valley. Tigers 31, Wofford 3. Well, this last particular drive took a little over two minutes, about two minutes, 10 seconds, to go 37 yards and seven plays, two first downs. Homer Jordan scored again from three yards out, and Pauling added the point after, so we have arrived at a 31-3 score. Donald Igwey Buike will kick off here as he places it on the tee at the 40-yard line. Back deep is Wade Lang now for the Wofford Terriers. All right, Igwe Buikwe has it set to his fashion on the tee, approaches, whoop, it fell off the tee just as he was coming up to it. One of the Wofford Terriers ran up and down the football immediately. It was his good headsy play, really. Although the football did fall off of the tee prior to Igwe Buikwe getting there. This last particular drive took a little over two minutes, about two minutes, ten seconds, to go 37 yards and seven plays, two first downs. Homer Jordan scored again from three yards out, and Pauling added the point after, so we have arrived at a 31-3 score. 
Donald Igwe Buike will kick off here as he places it on the tee at the 40-yard line. Back deep is Wade Lang now for the Wofford Terriers. All right, Igwe Buike has it set to his fashion on the tee, approaches, whoop, it fell off the tee just as he was coming up to it. One of the Wofford Terriers ran up and down the football immediately. It was his good headsy play, really. Although the football did fall off of the tee prior to Igwe Buike getting there. That's enough for one whole name, let alone Donald. Reminds me of the days of the K. Kaiser Orchestra with Ishka Bibble. All right, Igwe Buike has it on the tee again. Lang is backed up deep again for the Wofford Terriers. Here's the kick. Oh, he hit a beauty. Oh. Driving Lang all the way back to the end stripe in the end zone. It will be down. It will come out to the 20. It will be first and 10 for the Tigers at their own 20, or for the Terriers at their own 20-yard line with Clemson on top by a score of 31 to 3. 15 seconds for station identification on the Clemson Football Network. Barry Thompson has checked in at quarterback now for the Wofford Terriers. His handoff goes to the deep back that is uh, best, and he comes to his right and is knocked down at about the 22-yard line by Randy Cheek. Randy Cheek coming over from left linebacker, nailing Lenny Best as he tried to get outside. It's a pickup of two. It'll be second down and eight. I don't know if you got to hear any of the halftime or not, but Coach Ibrahim was... Uh I think just about as excited as Donald was about that 52-yard field goal. And that was the Major League kickoff just a moment ago also. Look down below us here, Scott. I see Mike Gaskew warming up along the Tiger sidelines. Yeah. Thompson now takes out. Thompson is back to throw. Looking over the middle and firing. It is incomplete out at the 45-yard line. The intended receiver downfield was Dirk Derrick, the tight end, who was open. He had split the defenders, but the pass a little underthrown. Billy Davis and Hollis Hall were there in double coverage. See, Barry Thompson, he's from an area high school, I believe. He's from, from Belton. Right, Belton Honeypack. Third down, eight now for the Wofford Terriers. Ball spotted at their own 22-yard line. Tigers on top, 31-3 in this game. I believe you're going to see... Mike in a quarterback. Homer's already had a very, very good afternoon. Let him sit out, I guess, the rest of the uh, game. Graves goes wide to the left side. Here's Thompson on a handoff. This time it is to Lang, the wing back, and he counters this time out over the 25 to the 27. But again, Tiger defense doing a good job of stopping that wing back counter here in the second half of play. And it will be fourth down for the Terriers. They'll still have three yards to go for a first down. So Billy Davis again backs up deep. And Chris Marshall is on to do the punting for Wofford. Four and three. Marshall's least effective punt was the one he uh, kicked last time out. He is capable. They, they want timeout. Yeah, well, Wofford, nope, the third quarter is in. Right. That's what it is. Okay. So time runs out. We have reached the end of the third quarter of play. And after three quarters, the score here at the Valley. Clemson 31, the Wofford Terriers 3. Okay, we're coming up on the fourth quarter. 15 minutes of football left to go. Clemson with a commanding 31-3 lead right now. 
And, Jim, what we've witnessed, I think, in the past few minutes is that superior uh, bench of the Tigers. They're beginning to wear the Terriers down a bit. Ken Brown is back to receive now for the Tigers. Chris Marshall to punt. Marshall gets the kickoff. Brown coming up under it at the 31. Starts to his right, cuts back up the middle to the 35, out to the 40, still on his feet to the 45-yard line. A 14-yard return by Ken Brown on a 37-yard punt. Ken Brown is a defensive back out of Hardwell, Georgia, just a sophomore. He's uh, the left-handed quarterback they recruited a couple of years ago, I believe. Yes. He came to Clemson as a quarterback, right. a left-hander. I don't know. Epley's a left-hander. Well, I, I think, think Ken Brown is, is Ken too. also? Yes. Okay, I didn't realize that. Jordan has McCall and McSwain in the eye behind him. Homer takes out, pitch back. This is uh, uh, McSwain turning the right corner, coming over the 45 to about the 48-yard line. Alan Tuthill there to pull him down. You know, I didn't realize that Kenny was, was a left-hander. He never did perform at quarterback here, and I guess never having seen him out there throwing the ball... I may be wrong, but that's very strong in the back of my mind. Well, I know so, Mike yeah. Epley is left-handed. Yeah. I mean, he was recruited a year ago as a quarterback, but Ken may well be, too. Tuttle goes wide to the left side. Homer has them in the eye. Takes out. This time looking to throw. Quick one to Magwood. He's got it at the 40, 35. Magwood down to the 30-yard line before he is pulled down. And it is Curtis Patterson who is there for Wofford. Magwood just one step away from going all the way. Did Homer do a great job of faking that one off? And I'll tell you, Frank Magwood has some speed in his feet. Mm -hmm. Stock still goes wide to the left side. Magwood splitting off right in. High formation behind Homer Jordan, the quarterback. Ball at the 30-yard line of the Terriers, first and 10. Here is McSwain. He's into the 25-yard line before he is pulled down. Kirk Breland was there for the Wofford Terriers, but a five-yard pickup for McSwain. And it brings about a second and five for the Tigers. Well, Jim, neither one of the tailbacks has broken a big, long one yet, but uh, Austin and McSwain both have performed very, very well this afternoon. Tigers are deep at running back. You won't mm -hmm. see probably one runner dominate this season, but many will pile up yardage. Second down and five at the 25. Again, McSwain, there's the 20. McSwain to the 15-yard line, and he is pulled down there. So Chuck McSwain breaking over left tackle, carrying for a first down. They've spotted it at the 16-yard line. He was hit by Curtis Patterson at that point. Very steady, very consistent play out of all the running backs who've been in today. Mag would have come to this side. Uh, 13 minutes to go on this game. Tigers knocking on the door one more time. Stock still left, Magwood to the right. Here's Jordan, handing it off to McCall, who dives straight ahead, gets inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line, where Ronnie Ray is there to spill him. 12.43 remaining in the football game. Tigers on top of the Wofford Terriers, 31-3. I started to tell you earlier, tomorrow, on the Clemson football television stations you'll see the Danny Forjo Kendall Alley goes wide to the left side double tight end offense they line up in the eye here is Homer Jordan keeping he's at the 10 he's down to the five yard line and that should be enough for a Tiger first down Curtis Patterson and Scott Steinmeier finally spilled Homer Jordan again he faked the pitch out to the wide man and carried himself to the five WFBC Television in Greenville, the anchor station for the Danny Ford Show, joined by WCIV in Charleston, WPDE in Florence, WRDW in Augusta, WOLO in Columbia, and on cable network in Savannah, Georgia, 8.30 Monday night. Try to wing back, pitch back to McSwain, a race to the end zone, Chuck McSwain, touchdown! A five-yard touchdown scamper by Chuck McSwain. Somebody did a beautiful job leading the blocking out there. I missed who it was, Scott. I don't know whether you saw it. It was Jeff McCall, the fullback, who was out in front and threw a beautiful block on the corner. Well, Homer had a hand at all the scoring earlier, and uh, this time McSwain takes it in, and it's 37-3. Igwe Buike to try the extra point. The kick is up. The kick is good. Timeout on the field. 11.54 remaining in the game. The score is Clemson 38, Wofford 3.
Again, another efficient drive. Seven plays, 56 yards, three first downs in that. It ended with McSwain going from five yards out. And uh, I guess the big play would have been the pass uh, Homer Jordan to Frank Magwood which uh, gave Clemson a first down at the Wofford College 29-yard uh, line. 11.54 to go in the game. Scott, I would venture a guess that's the last time you'll see Homer Jordan and company this afternoon. I would think so. I think Danny probably will substitute rather freely from now on. Bob Pauling will kick. Lang Wade backed up as the deep receiver for the Wofford Terriers. Pauling approaches the football, is high end over end kick. Going to be grabbed by one of the up backs, that is Craig Best. He gets free to the 20, 25, out to the 30, and down he goes at the 30 yard line. Has some scores at the half. Georgia 17, Tennessee nothing. In the second quarter, Mississippi 12, Tulane nothing. In the second quarter, Eastern Kentucky 14, South Carolina State nothing. Auburn leads TCU 7 to 3, that's in the second quarter. Second quarter, Appalachian 17, Lenore Ryan 6. In the second quarter, Mississippi State 10, Memphis State nothing. Wide left now comes Graves. Thompson at quarterback with Wilson and Gaines in behind. The give is to Gaines, sweeping wide right. Comes up over the 30 to the 34-yard line. And at that point, he is hit down by William Perry. So the pickup is about three yards. It'll bring about a second down and seven. WRHI in Rock Hill, WBCU in Union. Welcome back, folks, to the Clemson Tiger Network, 1981 edition. Good to have you with us. We'll talk about the fine stations on our network throughout this season. David Moore wide to the left side, back to throw Thompson. He's looking over the middle, firing. Man wide open is Wilson. Wilson hit hard, however, and knocked down at the 40-yard line as Roy Brown, sophomore linebacker, popped him good. And it comes up shy of a first down by about a yard. Third and one for Wofford. Ten minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the football game. 38 to three, the Tigers lead. Straight wishbone formation on third and one. The give this to, oh, the keep by Thompson, and he loses yardage as he tried to skirt outside to the right. His feet went out from under him. Randy Cheek was there to cover on him as he went down, and now it will be fourth down Wofford with the football back at their own 37-yard line and their four yards shy of a first down. Ken Brown will go back deep to receive for the Tigers. Chris Marshall will punt for the Terriers. Marshall awaits the snap. He has it. Gets his kick away. Hits a beauty. Brown backed up to his 19, sweeps to his right at the 20, comes up to the 25, a flag goes down, and he is knocked down at the 25-yard line. A 44-yard punt by Marshall, and David Moore was downfield to make the tackle on Ken Brown, but we did have a flag on the play. Right, we got two of them, um, one out near the 40 and one near the 20. You're right, I, didn't, I missed the one upfield there. Uh, they're having a big discussion about this one now, clipping. Clipping against the Tigers down here. And they're going to take the hold. That's going to cost the Tigers on a holding penalty. Stepped off from the 22. It will now go back to the 12-yard line. So apparently now the they clip... They spotted it back at the 11. I'm sorry, Scott. Uh, the clip must have taken place out near the 40 then. Right. Uh, and rather take a penalty stepped off from the 40, the Terriers did the smart thing. Mike Gaskew has checked in at quarterback now. Kendall Alley goes wide to the left side. Gilliard is split right. Jeff McCall along with Cliff Austin in the eye behind Mike Gaskew at quarterback. 38 to three, the Tigers lead this game. We're in the fourth quarter with 10 minutes remaining. Gaskew up under center, takes out. This time is riding it off to Austin. Cliff is hit back around the nine and down he goes at the nine yard line. Good defense that time. Wofford played it very, very well. Have an injured terrier. That is Curtis Patterson. Is it Curtis? No, Tim Moore is the injured Wofford player. He's he's sitting up, appears to maybe just have been stunned on that play or something, Scott. The trainer's his, out there quickly talking with him. His helmet is off. Tim was a linebacker for them last year. They moved him to middle guard this year. He gained uh, some weight. And he's played a 
pretty good football game this afternoon. He just might be worn out. They have played an awful lot of football today. All right. Jim Moore being stretched out there now. They're still working on him, so we have an opportunity with timeout on the field for this time in. The score, Clemson 38, Wofford 3. All right, Moore is up now and and being led to the sidelines. Meanwhile, it's second down Tigers, second and 13, the ball at their own nine-yard line. Uh, Tim Moore is going to be okay, it would appear. He came off under his own power. Gaskew, McCall, and Brendan Crite in the eye now. Here is Gaskew rolling right, looking to throw, being hemmed in. Now firing one is complete to Gilliard at the 15. Jerry out of bounds, up around the 19-yard line. Pfeiffer Nicholson was there to push him out of bounds. That time, Gaskew had to add lib a little bit. He was looking to go deep that time, but uh, he was chased around a bit and had to find Gilliard crossing over. Did you notice his passing motion? He almost submarined that thing, threw it sidearm uh, because of the defense bearing down on him, but it's first, almost, no, third down, three. Austin McCall in the eye, Gaskew the quarterback, pitch back to Cliff Austin, out over the 20, 25, Austin with a beautiful shoulder hit on the defender, just drove straight over him, and is finally bumped out of bounds as Langrier went down in the, in the explosion off the shoulder of the young man with the football, Cliff Austin. It's a first down at the 28-yard line. One of the um, Clemson assistant coaches came over a moment ago and wanted to know about how many yards Austin had, and at that point, late in the third quarter, it was near 80, so he has a shot at 100 yards. All right, the ride is off to Cliff Austin again. Straight ahead he goes to about the 33-yard line. Ronnie Ray was there. Barry Langer was there. Austin looks impressive this afternoon, Scott. 1978, you'll recall, as a freshman. He looked awesome at times, but did not play much because the Tigers were so deep in talent. But he then had the injury that really hurt him. He was rookie of the year that year in the ACC, I believe. McCall and Crite in the eye now. Here's Gaskew taking out. This is Brendan Crite. He's going to lose a yard back to about the 32 where Kirk Breland pulls him down. 38 to 3, Tigers on top, 850 remaining. Here's a halftime score. Pitt leads Illinois 14 to nothing. In the third, Kentucky 21, North Texas State nothing. In the second, Appalachian 24, Lenore Rhine 6. Of course, uh, we'll see Kentucky later on this year. October the 3rd in Lexington. Third and six for the Tigers. The ball at the 36-yard, 32-yard line. Gilliard in motion from wing right to left. The ride off to Austin. Fumbles the football, and Wofford recovers at the 39-yard line. The ball was stripped away from Cliff Austin as he came out over the 35. And rolling loose at the 39, it was picked up by John Richardson. He, um, he was not hit down and fumbled the ball. In fact, he was standing up when the ball was fumbled. And... Uh, He's probably a tired young man right now. He, he was looking around, bewildered, where'd the football go? And all of a sudden, Wofford was jumping all over it. All right, Thompson brings out the Wofford Terriers. They're at the 39 of the Tigers. Back to throw on first down, rolling to his right, looking upfield, now firing. This one is going to be incomplete. The intended receiver was Wade Lang down inside the 20. Billy Davis was there along with Vandell Arrington for the Tigers on coverage. And Pickett had a good rush. Edgar Pickett playing a defensive end this year. He was a fullback a year ago. Update on that Georgia-Tennessee game. The Dogs now lead it 24 to nothing in the third quarter. Ooh, Dogs are putting it on them, huh? Wonder what kind of day Herschel's having. I don't know. He was all over Sports Illustrated, Inside Sports, the Sporting News. 
Johnny Majors calls him the most uh, single important player in college football. All right, here is that uh, wing reverse again to Lang, and Lang breaks free across the 30, down to the 25, to the 22-yard line before Billy Davis can hammer him down. Wade Lang shows good speed. I guarantee you the young man can motor. I tell you what, there are about 60,000 people in the stadium who now believe that Wade Lang is a player. And that Wofford is a pretty good football team. Doggone right. 38-3 uh, our score, but Wofford has rolled up some impressive statistics this afternoon. It's at the 23, it is first down. Flags are down all over the place as Thompson gives off to Gaines, and he dives over the right side inside the 15 to about the 12-yard line. Well, but the referee I believe threw this we may have motion on this one. Yeah, the referee threw it. This one's going to come back. <laughs> Clock is at 7.34 remaining in this football game. Next week, the Tigers are in New Orleans where they go against Tulane in the Superdome. Airtime next Saturday night, 8 o'clock, Eastern Daylight Time. Well, there has been some, uh, some concern voiced by several people. How will the Tigers react to playing in a dome stadium? It is different. I, I guess if you look up looking for the football, you do get a different perspective on it. Five-yard penalty for illegal procedure. It's first down and 15 for the Terriers. The ball at their own 28. This time, they ride that reverse again to Menzer. And big play by tackle Dan Benish, who reached out, grabbed him by the shoulder pad, and spins him down for a loss back to the 30. So now it'll be second down and 17 yards to go for Wofford. William Perry just came back into the game. He looks like a bulldozer coming on the field. <laughs> I followed one part way to Clemson today. <laughs> Did I, you really? You're right. He does resemble one. He's as wide as that plow on the front. <laughs> Back to throw Thompson. Looking right, firing right, incomplete, thrown out of bounds. The intended receiver, Mike Taylor, well covered on the left side by Andy Hedden and Hollis Hall. And, of course, the uh, clock has stopped on the incompletion. 6.45 left to go in this game. Turned out to be a decent day for football, although I do see some uh, some clouds around. It doesn't look threatening right now. The sun is out. I think it's a fantastic day for football. It's just beautiful here, and it's great to have the season underway. And every year, once that basketball and baseball at Clemson University wraps up, Scott, it's look forward to football. Yeah, and it seems like a long, long summer. All right, Thompson back to throw. Little screen pass out on the left side, completed to Craig Best. Best gets away and is then really hammered down by Kennard, and we're going to get a flag thrown. I'll tell you something, that official threw a flag from way out of position, Scott. Yes. There were two officials on top of the play, and that was a high hit. He hit him around the neck and hauled him down, but an official who was to the far sideline, a good 40 yards off the play, threw a face mask flag, and that's, mm. that's uncalled for. He's out of position to call that. Well, nevertheless, it's marked off against the Tigers down to the 11-yard line. Well, he was horse-collared, no question yep. about it. Unintentionally, just horse-collared. But to throw a face mask flag from 40 yards off the play is a bad piece of officiating. And Norville Nave, commissioner of ACC officials, is here watching. I'm sure he's grading. I would imagine he'd take notes on that. Well, there's the crowd noise, but Wofford doesn't react. Thompson hands it off to Gaines. He'll try the right side. He is hit hard back around the 11-yard line. Forward progress carried him into the 10. Joey Glenn, Jeff Davis, and Hollis Hall were all there. You don't suppose Virginia Tech would react to crowd noise like that, do you? Nah, Bill Dooley teaches them to ignore it. <laughs> The ball is at the 10-yard line, 547, and the clock is moving left to go in this game. A lot of folks call it the Dooley rule. <laughs> they could be right. Thompson has them down. Wing to the right side, wide receiver to the right. That is Taylor. Here is a pitch back to the wing again. He slides to his left looking to throw, but he'll not throw as he has hammered down. Jeff Davis was the first to get to him. Finally getting him was Jeff Bryant back around the 16-yard line. And the Tiger defense fired up now. Scott, it's beginning to get a little infectious out there. Some yeah. of that enthusiasm is returning to this Clemson team. They played in the first quarter and a half without patting each other on the back, without any celebration. That time, Jeff Davis just mauled Jeff Bryant after he made the tackle. And poor old uh, Lang was at the bottom of that pileup. He wanted to throw that ball, but he just never could stop and get in position to throw it. 
They kept stringing him out. Third down, 14 yards to go. Ball at the 16-yard line. And timeout being asked now by Barry Thompson, the quarterback of the Terriers. Timeout on the field with 4.49 remaining in the game. The score, Clemson 38, Rufford 3. Back in the Valley, 4.49 left to go in this game. Barry Thompson is huddled with head coach uh, Buddy Sasser along the sidelines uh, to get some words of wisdom. Third down and a long way to go. They would have to penetrate the two-yard line for first down. The ball is spotted right now outside the 15. I'm sure they'd, like to, they'd love to score a touchdown because they have had an awful lot of total offense today and only three points on that scoreboard to show for it. Clemson's defense has been tough when it's had to. And Barry. the offense has made the big, big plays. Barry Thompson brings them out with Danny Graves wide to the right side, Lenny Best and Craig Best in the backfield. Thompson to throw over the middle. Was it trapped? I think it was, yes. Tell you what, that was Craig Best. I'm going to tell you something, Scott. The official, again, was caught a little out of position. The ball did skip a few inches in front of him, but Craig, being a little inexperienced as a freshman, immediately turned and slammed it down, knowing that he had trapped it. Otherwise, he might have gotten away with it because uh, the official was a few yards off the play. It was screened out. Well, it's uh, fourth down, and again, Barry Thompson wants to talk to his coach. So with fourth down and still about 14 yards to go for the Wofford Terriers, I would imagine they're going to go for it here with 4.42 remaining. And with timeout on the field, the score remains. Clemson 38, the Wofford Terriers 3. He might have gotten away with a reception he hadn't. <laughs> Tigers 38, the Terriers 3. Coming down the final few minutes of this football game. It's been a long afternoon for the Wofford players along that sideline. They have a, a lot of things to be uh, proud of, though. They've played extremely well. The offense has been able to move the ball up and down the field. They've had little success, however, in putting the ball into the end zone. Their only scoring came on a field goal in the first period of play. In fact, they scored first in this game, and Clemson has scored the last 38 points. All right, set to go. Thompson brings them up to the line of scrimmage. In motion from the left side goes Wade Lang. Thompson's back to throw on fourth down, going for the big one, and it's touchdown! <laughs> Tight end Dirk Derrick did a beautiful post pattern that time and a beautiful throw by Barry Thompson. Hit him on the numbers. He beat Anthony Rose on the play. And Wofford has hit pay dirt to make it a 38 to nine game as we have Don Hairston coming on to make it a 38 to 10 or attempt to make it a 38 to 10 game. Tell you what, Thompson went over to the sidelines, got his play down pat and then threaded the needle in there beautifully. It was a good call. Here's Hairston's cry for the point after, the kick is up, the kick is good. So there was time out on the field. The score here at the Valley, Clemson 38, Wofford 10. Fourth 36 left to go. Wofford strikes for the first time since the first quarter. 
and they have they put a touchdown in Barry Thompson to Derek uh, 38 yard uh, or a 16 yard touchdown pass it's a 38 10 game now as Wofford set to kick it off 436 as we mentioned and uh, many of the 60,000 faithful most of them wearing Clemson orange today beginning to file out head for the parking lots try to avoid that massive traffic jam headed home a lot of them just stay out there till it gets dark having yeah a, having a few refreshments about 2:30. uh well 2 30 two thirds of the people left on the bank are still there they've had brown and chuck mcswain deep brown backs up lets the kickoff hit at the five and it rolls into the end zone just rolls into the end zone hmm. can watch that one bounce around a bit it took one of those high flip-flops out there and for a moment it was a bit precarious whether it would make it or not. I think sometimes uh, players uh, tend to forget that after that kickoff travels 10 it's yards. It's free ball. <laughs> it's anybody's. It's going to come out to the 20. Appalachian leads Lenore Ryan 24-0 at the half. Pittsburgh 14, Illinois 6 now. That's in the third quarter. Georgia 24, Tennessee nothing. Still in the third. Tigers out with Mike Gaskew at quarterback. They'll have Cliff Austin and Brendan Kreit in the eye. Brendan Kreit gets the call. He works his way for a yard out to the 21, and that's it. Kentucky 21, North Texas State nothing in the third. Auburn leads TCU 21 to 10. That's in the second quarter of play. 38 to 10 here. The Tigers over Wofford with 4.15 remaining in the game. Oh, we got some new people trotting off and on for the Tigers. Danny's played a lot of folks this afternoon. All right, here is Gaskew keeping, turning upfield, gets out to about the 24, and that'll be it as he is hauled Gaskew down at that point. Keeper. So mark it at the 24-yard line. It'll be third down and six. Don't forget, next week it's a Saturday night game from New Orleans from the Superdome. And for those of you who will not make the trip down to New Orleans, our broadcast time be at 8 o'clock. That's Eastern time. Craig Crawford is a wide receiver to the right side now as Gaskew takes out. Back to throw, looking for Crawford. Now going to have to tuck it in and go straight ahead and gets out to about the 27, and that's all. Crawford was open. Mike did not see him when he was open, and by the time he did spot him, he was well covered. Tackle made by Barry Mason. In now again is Dale Hatcher to do the punting. Backed up deep for the Wofford Terriers will be David Moore to receive this punt. With Along with Renfro. Yeah, we got a flag. Hatcher has hit one of those six-second hangers, Ooh. and Renfro waits for it and fair catches at the 20-yard line. He hit a boomer, <laughs> a 50-yarder that had about five and a half to six seconds hang time on it, Scott. Yeah. But there was a flag, as you say. Yeah. The, uh, one of the offensive players trying to get onto the field uh, was not set uh, one count before the snap, and that's the reason it's a motion penalty or a procedure penalty. Uh, Hatcher is at a disadvantage simply because his reputation has preceded him. Well, that's true, too. Uh, everybody expects him to kick the ball 80 yards every time out. He, well, uh, he didn't kick at 80, but uh, he lived up to his reputation as a punter right there. He sure got it in the air. So much so that Buddy Sasser and company decided they would take the ball at the 20 rather than <laughs> have him kick it again. <laughs> 248. Clock has stopped, of course, momentarily. Wofford uh, beginning uh, to get their offense back out on the field now. Barry Thompson threw a touchdown strike just a few moments ago to uh, Derek, 16 yards. And it's 38-10 game now. All right, Thompson ready to go now. Brings Taylor wide to the left side. Has Bossard and Craig Best in that backfield. Now brings Menzer, the wingback, in motion from right to left. Thompson on a delay give this time to uh, Craig Best. And he's over right tackle. Bounces out over the 25 to the 30, but a flag on the play. With a flag down, let's take 15 seconds for station identification. This is the Clemson Football Network. Clemson was offside on that play. Wofford 
very wisely elects to take the play to make it second down and less than a yard. The ball just shy of the 30-yard line. Yeah, it's very, very close. David Moore goes wide to the right side. Menzer is a wing to the left, now comes in motion wide to the left. Thompson takes out, looking to throw, looking for Menzer over the middle. It's going to be intercepted, picked off downfield, and with the football for the Tigers, carrying it into about the 31-yard line. I believe that's number 90, is it not? Yes, sir. That was... Uh, Johnny Rembert. <laughs> Johnny Rembert makes an interception. The Tigers' second pickoff of the day. Earlier, Terry Kennard had one. And Anthony Peretti, a freshman quarterback out of Florida, is on now for the Tigers. We have substitutions all over the place. McCall and Crite remain in at the running backs, however, and Peretti this time gives to McCall. He breaks up a right tackle at the 10, down to the seven-yard line. <laughs> Curtis Patterson finally caught up with Jeff McCall. That was one of the better running efforts on the afternoon by a Tiger back in one play, Scott. He carried a couple of defenders about five yards with him after he penetrated the 15. Moved it inside the seven now. Tigers again threatening. All right, set to go now. This time the pitch back to Brendan Crite. Crite hemmed in, trying to get around the corner. Now retreats, is knocked down at about the 11-yard line. Minute and a half remaining. Barry Mason, Dale Spence there defensively for Wofford. A minute 23 in the clock, of course, is running right now. 38 to 10, Clemson on top of Wofford, and here come the Tigers again. All right, set to go. Peretti, the quarterback. Up under center he goes. It's second down. This time, it is touchdown. That is Jeff McCall over right tackle, bursting behind a block on the right side. McCall goes in for the score, and suddenly it becomes a 44 to 10 football game. With still a minute five left to go in this game. And we have Bob Pauling in again to attempt a point after touchdown. Pauling to attempt it. Peretti will hold. As we await the snap. There's the spot. Pauling's kick is up. His kick is good. There's timeout on the field. The score. Clemson 45. Wofford 10. Forty-five to ten. The Tigers back on top by a margin of thirty-five points now, Scott. After Wofford had come back to score that touchdown to make it a thirty-eight to ten game, and the Tigers getting a workout down there in front of the student cheering section. Hey, I just thought of something. Well, What's I hope it? none of the assistant coaches are listening. They weren't here on that last drive. Maybe no. Peretti called the plays, huh? Maybe he did. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who called them. If he did, he looked pretty good. The coaches had left the box. After that last Wofford touchdown, Igwe Buike's long kick is going to be fielded down around the three, dropped and picked up by Wade Lang, and he's out to the five, skirting to his left, up to about the seven, and down he goes. Chased down by Kenny Brown. 55 seconds left in the football game. Here at the Valley, the Tigers with a successful home opener before 60,000 fans here today taking on a determined Wofford Terrier group that just found itself outmanned after the halftime whistle blew. You could almost tell it in the second half. Uh, they were forced to go and still are with pretty much their first team. And uh, it's humid down there, temperature in the 80s, and they're just getting worn down. Barry Thompson has Bossard and Craig Best in the backfield. He'll split Taylor to the left side, brings Menzer, the wing back, in motion from right to left. Thompson on a delay, giving to Craig Best. He'll fight his way out to the 10. That'll be it. As down he goes, across defensively for the Tigers this time to make the play. 
was Jim Scott, a defensive tackle, sophomore out of Alexandria, Virginia. So it is second down, about seven yards to go for the Wofford Terriers. The ball at their own 10-yard line, 30 seconds remaining in the game. Clock continues to tick down. Next week, Tulane at the Superdome, 8 o'clock, daylight time, our broadcast time. Thompson this time rides it off to Bossard. He goes straight up the middle for a couple. And that may be the final play of this football game as the clock ticks relentlessly below 10 seconds now. Eight Six. seconds remaining. That ought to be it. Now five for the crowd council off. And that is it from the Valley here this afternoon where the Clemson Tigers have won the opener of the 1981 football season. And they do it by defeating the Wofford Terriers. Final score, Clemson 45, Wofford 10.